possible. Um, uh, alternatively, um, and, and um, if possible, also get your questions uh, uh, directed to uh, the respondents, um, as it were. Uh, without any waste of time, colleagues, you are most welcome to this thought-provoking um, uh, seven, uh, webinar, uh, and I will not waste time. I would call upon Tabi so my co-pilot, to introduce um, uh, His Excellency Caesar Njigalana, who is the CEO and the convener of this particular uh, conference. Over to you, Tabi so. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Mbele. Thank you so much for uh, that introduction and uh, a warm welcome as well. I'd like to extend to all our distinguished guests um, and I will not repeat uh, what Dr. Mbele has just said. Uh, I just like, would like to add one more thing. Um, we live in a time where we have become so much a part of who we are. Just uh, two weeks ago, I was hosting an event and we did a rehearsal with one of the speakers and uh, 10 minutes later, uh, she came on wearing a mask. So masks are not necessary because this is virtual, <laughs> just a warning to all our speakers. But a warm welcome to you. Um, good morning, good evening. Um, we've got guests from all uh, parts of the continent and the world. So where, where you are, a warm greetings to you. My name is Tabiso Sigwani, as uh, Dr. Mbele has said. I will not waste uh, too much time uh, because I'd like to introduce our speaker and to also just uh, perhaps encourage you that as speakers are speaking sometimes, we get onto these platforms and then we forget. You might have questions as the speaker speaking, just note them down for yourself. And when it's time to address the particular speaker and the respondents, then you are able to, uh, as uh, Dr. Mbele uh, requested, to put in your questions in the chat box and we'll sift through them and uh, give them through to the relevant speakers. So um, I would like to hand over, uh, but a brief introduction um, of, um, his Excellency uh, Sisa Njigelana, Tata Njigelana, who's had extensive um, experience in the governance space and also as an entrepreneur in the engineering space, both continentally and internationally as well. So he's very well placed for this particular uh, engagement and event. And also to thank uh, Brasol um, of Brand Hill Africa, um, who is actually the brains behind this particular initiative. And to also encourage you, please, if there are people that you know would be interested, we are just starting, please encourage as many people people to come and join this conversation. The more ears um, we've got, the better, because this is a critical conversation. So it's not too late. If you're able to operate uh, and multifunction, please just get on those WhatsApps and encourage more people to join us. Without taking any more time, I'd like to welcome uh, uh, Dr. Njigelana to please take the, the platform. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sister Viso. And uh, on behalf of uh, Brand Hill Africa and uh, Snagoyori Consulting. Uh, let me welcome everyone who has taken time to uh, join us in this uh, August occasion. Let me welcome in particular His Excellency Ambassador Mene. Let me welcome also uh, even yourselves, uh, Dr. Mbele and Austabiso uh, Sigwane. Uh, and uh, obviously we have Respondents, yeah, Mr. Ben Lega from the DRC Invest, and uh, um, Ambassador Youssef Amrani, Ambassador of Morocco here in South Africa, Mr. Peter uh, Karengwa, the Chief Executive of Invest in Africa Conference, and uh, also Ms. Masingi Damasunga, who will be doing the word of thanks. Uh, I'm not sure that. Uh, Miranda. Jose Miranda as well from Sutari. From Sutari. And uh, we also have uh, someone who will do a poetry rendition of Ufense Ndite. That is a chapter. Jaru's chapter. Oh, and Jaru's chapter, since our family has grown uh, as well. And then uh, also welcome. Uh, the brains behind all of this, uh, Brasol Mulobi, who heads uh, Brand Hill Africa. Uh, obviously, one has to extend beyond just the names because there are a number of diplomats who committed that they will join us. And as, as I'm looking at the screen, more people are joining in numbers. Uh, they obviously are business leaders uh, of note uh, heading either their own companies or business association or industrial 
organizations. Uh, there are a number of entrepreneurs joining us. Uh, a couple of uh, officials from various governments. The Media Fraternal was uh, also committed uh, to join. Uh, throughout the continent, beyond just uh, our country, uh, South Africa. Let me say, since the beginning of 2021, this free trade uh, initiative has, be, has been rolled out by Ambassador Mene with the support of African leadership with utmost keenness. I'll say so because uh, uh, I used to joke with him at times that uh, where exactly is his office? Is it in a hotel or in a plane uh, or in Accra? Or is it just a combination of uh, these three uh, locations? However, one can also say that the journey of realization of this uh, free trade initiative has become with notable support from heads of states and uh, other prominent uh, leaders in the continent. And that should be uh, taken note of because it serves as an inspiration to such a daunting task. And uh, it becomes logical to celebrate uh, these humble few steps of this initiative it has taken in these uh, 16 months of formal existence from the beginning of last year. And uh, I'm saying celebrate, celebrate it uh, during the Africa month. And uh, that's what we, as this partnership have been targeting. And uh, this partnership of ours, young as it is, has been seized with promoting uh, the free trade uh, initiative as its flagship project. Ever since we started working together with Prasol, uh, and we made this a uh, flagship project over and above other projects that were uh, heading and I uh, must say, uh, we've been chasing Ambassador Ahmed uh, from the beginning of this year, uh, year just to ensure that uh, after some engagement we did with him last year, we also have an update as to how far are things. And uh, inshallah, we've been able to uh, get him. And uh, once again, we're very grateful for that. Uh, as the theme of this uh, event uh, indicates, you know, trade and investment, uh, promoting uh, the free trade initiative. It is therefore hoped and expected that intensive participation, participation of business community is another aspect that needs close monitoring given the centrality of the business community in driving trade and investment. Of course, the state-owned companies do have a vital role to play as well. That we need to take note, uh, note of. Uh, hopefully, we would be getting as many diplomas as possible as we go along, because I can see the number of participants is growing, because they are expected to participate. Uh, and given their need for them to advise and guide their various uh, countries in the advancement of this initiative. Uh, we cannot also overlook the interest of the rest of the world. Uh, that cannot be discounted because uh, Africa's trade and investment is interwoven uh, with the rest of the world in various uh, forms. And uh, I say that to some authority because I'm also quite active in the BRICS Business Council. And amongst other things, that's what we try to promote as much as is possible as to, we have this young baby, the African continental free trade area, and we need to look at to what are the synergies and how, what are the complementarities between these two uh, platforms, BRICS and the, the AFCFTA. Uh, notwithstanding the benefits and prospects, uh, we need also to be realistic that challenges ahead are also strewn in the road towards realization of any sizable intra-African trade, but I'm sure we are quite uh, resolute and inspired to ensure after so many years by our leaders from the birth of the uh, 
organization of African unity in the mid 60s that uh, amongst other things, we can make them smile in their last resting places that uh, here is one of their dreams uh, coming through and getting realized uh, step by step. Furthermore, it's not only trade, but also investment in all forms that is crucial for the realization of the, uh, this vision. I'm highlighting that because obviously, amongst other things, uh, we, we, we are very keen uh, to see as the numbers are growing that uh, we will get uh, various uh, individuals or groupings who are also in the investment uh, sector so that they can uh, take the advantage of uh, Ambassador Mene sharing uh, the few steps that we have taken you know, in this initiative from last year. Of course, uh, one says that because I know Ambassador Mene will be sharing all the uh, you know, endeavors that she has led, you know, up to now. And uh, once again, let me welcome everyone. And uh, your time is appreciated, your presence is appreciated uh, for taking a conscious decision to be part of us in this uh, webinar. Uh, shall I then say, Eshegani, Asante Sane, Siabonga, uh, Brigado. Let me then hand over back to the program directors. Thank you very much, uh, His Excellency uh, uh, Caesar, for that uh, um, um, exciting um, <clears throat> open remarks, which sets the scene in terms of uh, what to expect. We certainly hope that. Um, uh, all the participants have heeded your call and we are quite ready uh, to really give us a sense of what to expect. Without any waste of time, uh, I will call upon Tabiso to introduce the next um, uh, you know, uh, person to give us a, a word or two in terms of rendition. Over to Tabiso. We seems to have uh, technical glitches with Tabiso there. Um, while we're still waiting for it to come through, um, may I take this opportunity to uh, call upon um, Rasol, um, who is the convener, as His uh, um, Excellency have already pointed out. Rasol will give us the context of the, uh, the, the Africa IPC and CEO Forum, um, you know, in terms of what has been the proceedings there. Uh, without any waste of time, let me just quickly give a sense of who Brasol is, a person that I'm going to appreciate over a period of time. Um, Saul is a former SA Consul General to Milan. Uh, he's tended to be by many as one of the foremost uh, thought leaders on Africa's competitive identity and public diplomacy with expertise in global marketing, um, diplomacy, as well as cultural art industries. His areas of specializations are in the art, impactful of a country's nation brand on consumer investment decision-making. He is a fellow of UK Chartered Institute of Marketing, a member of Marketing Association of South Africa and Institute of Marketing Management, which is affiliated to the African Confederation Marketing. In 2020, Brasol uh, was part of the, the he, was, uh, he was the World CEO Ranking Board member nominated uh, for, for the year. Um, then he was also the World Brand Congress bestowed upon him, um, upon Brand Hill Africa and the Brand Leadership Awards in 2022. Um, so these are some of the snippets of who Brasol is, and I will not really go into detail for, um, I will spend a whole day trying to make sense of this. <coughs> Brasol, without any waste of time, may I give you this opportunity to give uh, us a sense of um, uh, what to expand in terms of the out, the context of the conference as it were. Um, thank you, our our program directors. Um, His Excellency uh, Wamkelemene, 
Ambassador Amrani, uh, you distinguish our respondents, um, Mr. Ben Laker, uh, Mr. Jose Miranda, uh, Mr. John Caregua, uh, our poet, uh, Jaros uh, Jafta, uh, Masingida Masunga, who is the, the founder of Above Normal Sports and, and, and Fitness Gear. Um, it's quite an honor for me. Um, in fact, um, how I feel today, I probably think this is how, how Don King, the, the bo boxing promoter felt after he managed to convince um, the then uh, boxing champion, George Foreman, uh, to, to agree to a fight with a rising star by then, um, uh, uh, Muhammad Ali. And it, it's a legendary story that led to what today became known as Rumble in the Jungle. So I would say uh, this is some kind of Rumble in the Jungle for me and Butsisa, my, my partner, who has walked this path with me from day one. Uh, when I was serving as South Africa's Consul General to Milan uh, between 2012 and 2016, in, in 2015, uh, Italy hosted the World Association of Investment Promotion Agencies. And I found the development a bit worrying uh, during the conference because although there were a number of CEOs of economic development agencies from the continent, I then realized that in fact, they were meeting each other for the first time, meaning that they've never spoken to each other up until they met each other in Italy. This was very worrying for me. And then coming back home, I joined the Houghton Growth and Development Agency as a group executive for trade and investment promotion. I then learned that, in fact, uh, in South Africa, I'm not so sure about the statistics from other African countries, all your, your, your investments, whether foreign or, or domestic, 90% uh, of them are facilitated by the private sector. And only 10% are facilitated by government at national level and also all your provincial economic development agencies. So when I quit my job at the GGDA in June uh, 2020, I then decided that I was going to enter this 90% space to see exactly uh, how business uh, was conducted so that in a way, in a humble way, I could also be able to, to, to mobilize investments, not only in South Africa, but also across the entire continent. And as a marketer then, I said, there, there should be three main strategic objectives. One is to brand position my country and all other African countries as viable destinations for, for foreign direct investment, but also as viable tourist destination. And whilst at the same time, I should try to brand uh, made in Africa service and product brands so that our people could be able to consume them. But beyond that, they should also be able to access foreign markets. In fact, Tebe Ikalafeng, one of the respected uh, marketers, uh, not only in South Africa, but across uh, the entire continent, every year conducts a, an annual brand survey uh, on, and he identifies the top 100 most admired brands on the continent. When he launched the survey in 2010, 34% uh, of the top 100 most admired brands in Africa were African. And then you come down to 2021, the number has dwindled to 13%. And this is where Brand Hill Africa comes in to help brand 
made in Africa service and product brand so that our people can consume them. Because if we consume our own brands, uh, the companies are able to reinvest the revenue into developing their manufacturing capacity. Therefore, they are able to create jobs here at home. And when they create jobs, then they are contributing to reversing the, the, the frontiers of poverty, of unemployment and inequality, which, which are be devilling the entire continent. So this is where Brent Hill comes in. And then I went back to my 2015 experience in Italy. Then I said, for us to be able to mobilize investments on the continent, CEOs of investment promotion agencies in our countries need to be talking to each other so that we are able to share investment opportunities that could be sold to the entire continent and also to, uh, to foreign investors. But at the same time, we also need to promote uh, products that are, are manufactured in our individual countries because intra-African trade has to speak to us embracing and consuming products that are, that are manufactured uh, in our continent. And then I then, uh, with my partner, we then decided that we're going to establish three main platforms. The first one is Jumbo Africa Online, which has since developed into a news portal where entrepreneurs from across the continent are, are promoting their products. And the second platform is the Biashara Services uh, and Products Africa Conference and, and Exhibition, which is a series of webinars and conferences. And today we are contributing to one of, uh, uh, one of those efforts to ensure that we have to annual conferences, but in between all these annual conferences, we have quarterly webinars. And the, the third platform, which I'm talking to, which responds to my concerns from 2015, is that we need to bring together CEOs of economic development agencies to be talking to each other, to share notes, and also to ensure that um, they have a common vision of attracting foreign direct investments into the continent. And at the same time, they should also collaborate on how they can promote um, made in Africa service and product brands so that they could be able to access foreign markets. And I'm glad to say that um, the Houghton Growth and Development Agency came on board to support this initiative. And people may ask why Houghton Growth and Development Agency, which is a provincial entity. Houghton is very important in the sense that it contributes 35, uh, uh, 30, 34%, sorry, 35% to the country's GDP, the, which is 5% more than the combined GDP contribution of, of the second and the third uh, biggest contributors to our GDP, which is the Western Cape at 16% and KwaZulu Natal at 14%. And Houting is regarded as the, the, the economic hub of the entire uh, continent. In fact, the GDP of this province is bigger than the GDP of 47 African countries, which makes Houting. Uh, the seventh biggest economy on the continent. So it is very important that um, the province engages with the entire continent. And we are happy that during the first phase of our implementation, already we have seen uh, in the North, we have Egypt, which we should con congratulate for having overtaken South Africa as the second biggest economy on the continent. And then in the, in the West of, of Africa, we have Nigeria and Ghana, and Nigeria being the biggest economy on the continent. In the East, um, we have Kenya, which is the regional economic capital, but we are also happy that um, 
the DRC has just joined uh, uh, East African community. Uh, even though people will say it, it that contributes to the, the what they call the the spaghetti um, situation of where you have one country belonging to multiple regional economic uh, communities. But for us, this is also important because then we have the DRC as part of East Africa at the same time being part of SADC. And we are happy today that uh, the CEO of DRC Invest, Mr. Ben Laker, will be one of the respondents. So the progress uh, we have made on establishing this structured um, engagement mechanism be between all the CEOs is progressing very well. And also let me indicate that we have reached out to the African Business uh, Council and we have also reached out to the Pan-African Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And we are also in, in conversation with the all African Chambers of Mind and other uh, mining associations, which has um, members in, in 32 countries. And the last time I spoke to them, they were confident that they should be able to attract two more national mining chambers to join them, which means that then they'll be having a presence in 34 African countries, which means they will have an observer seat at the African Union. So we are engaging with economic development agencies, CEOs, whilst at the same time engaging the private sector. And this initiative is different from what you find in the market because many initi initiatives such as this one, they will expect companies to pay a lot of money to participate. Whereas with us, it's all free. We allow every business chamber to, to participate in, in this uh, engagement forum where they're able to engage with CEOs of economic development agencies. Let me pause here and give uh, the reins back to the program directors. And once again, uh, thank you to His Excellency Wam Kelemene, the Ambassador of Morocco and the respondents mm. and all other participants who are on the program for having agreed to, to grace this occasion. Thank you, um, Rasol Mulobi for just putting everything into context. I'd still like to encourage everybody, those of you who are not with us from the very beginning, you're welcome. Um, you've missed two uh, of our speakers, but we still have uh, more incredible speakers that are with us. Um, and I'm co-hosting with uh, Dr. Nimrod Mbele. So we're going to have a little bit of um, a rendition of a poet, of a poem rather, from somebody who is um, known by crowds, people who love poetry, people who love, love the spoken word. Her name is Ntabiseng Rose Ja Jafta. She is known for leaving crowds wanting for more and hopefully will also be left in the same way and mesmerized. She comes from what we know in South Africa as our judicial uh, capital, which is the city of Bloemfontein. It is also known as the city of roses because of um, the, the plenty roses that uh, come from that particular city, but also it's clearly produced a rose in the form of Ntabi Singh. Osin Ntabi Singh, I'd like to hand over to you to give us what you prepared for us this morning. Wasn't Tabi saying? Okay, I'm going to just check if she is actually um, already with us, if she's online. But in the meantime, just to uh, introduce her or give you a little bit more about her, she has written an anthology, a beautiful um, anthology called Rooted from the Heart that comprises of uh, poetry. And uh, she speaks a lot from emotions. She heals through uh, her word and her poetry beyond the entertainment, which is also known for um, a very bubbly personality, a down to earth personality, but also very outspoken. And she speaks about issues that are very relatable. Um, she has a lot of commentary in her work. Um, she has traveled extensively through her work. So those of you who are um, you know, uh, CEOs, um, people who do events, there's a name that you could have next time that you have an event, she actually get Ntabi Singh on board to come and give you, um, you know, her brilliance. I'd like to just check if she's on so that if she's not, uh, we move on to our next speaker and hopefully she will be able to join us. Russell, are you able to check for me if she has actually uh, come on board? And while we do that to encourage you as well, 
everybody that has joined us to please remember, put down your questions um, as you hear the particular speakers and perhaps the things that you'd like to note. We will be going through a process of a Q&A where we'll be able to give the respondents an opportunity to actually just hear from you in terms of your questions. But also please, I noticed earlier on while Brasol was speaking that uh, some people have their mics on, please make sure that you all uh, mute the videos. Speak. and the, no, the, 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 the Yes. Okay, um, Jarose had connected and she left and then she was trying to come in as I was speaking, but I couldn't admit her. Uh, maybe let's go to the next speaker and then I will, I will chase after her. Okay, um, let's do that. Uh, Dr. Mbell, I'd like to hand over to you while we uh, give uh, Singh an opportunity to get uh, connected. Hopefully it's not going to be something that's going to take too long. Um, and while we're just um, trying to sort things out with Ntabi Singh, uh, Brasol, um, Namo asks whether we have any people among the delegates who are working on op automation of the ACFA rules so that one can check compliance in an automated manner. I just think that's a broad question that uh, perhaps uh, somebody could uh, just respond to in the meantime. Dr. Mbell, I'm going to hand over to you. I think Brasol is busy trying to connect with uh, Ntabi Singh. Um, and then also I think I suggest as well, because this is also an opportunity to network. If you could put as a participant who you are um, and introduce yourself, because then uh, this is also an opportunity for connections to be made through this process of, of engagement. And uh, we've got esteemed uh, panelists, we've got esteemed guests. Um, all of you um, are occupying spaces of significance. And I think we might as well just grab the opportunity to connect and, and make networks if, if that's possible. Um, let's check if uh, there's been any progress with um, Ntabi Singh there. It looks like we still don't have her as yet. Um, perhaps then we should uh, move on to uh, our next speaker. Let me uh, get on to that. Uh, apologies about these. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the difference and the challenges that sometimes come with virtual um, uh, virtual uh, events, including uh, some of these. Let me just check if... Um... Russell, are you able to just update us on whether Ntabi Singh is winning or not? And I suggest we go on. She will come in later. Okay, and do we have an update? Because I'm just thinking uh, we do have load shedding problem. Maybe it has hit it. So let's, let's go ahead. Excuse me, I want, I want just to inform you that I will be leaving in 15, 20 minutes. So if you have time to give me the floor to, to, to speak, I will be more than uh, appreciated. Uh, Russell, I, I just perhaps because um, the ambassador is, um, is running, is, is, is running time, perhaps I suggest that we go and, and give him the platform. No, the ambassador can speak before His Excellency Wam Kelemene. Um, apologies to him. No, no, no problem. I, anyhow, I will be leaving around 50 to 20 minutes because I have a very important meeting to, to, to help. If not, I will send you my intervention, okay? Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Is uh, His Excellency Tatuam uh, Gele um, ready, perhaps? Perhaps because he's supposed to be the next speaker? Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Uh, I, I am ready if I may take the floor. May I on, uh, uh, welcome you, um, His Excellency, um, um, His Honorable uh, Mr. Wamgele Nene, who is the SG of um, F, uh, the F, AFC, AF, I always get this messed up, <laughs> the AFCT, um, C, CFTA. I will get it right, I will get it right. Thank you so much for making your time. Um, it's been quite a, a challenge and understandably getting you and pinning you down. So we really, really don't take for granted the time that you've made um, to actually be with us on this panel. And to also just thank you for making the time because we know that your, your time is, is extremely tight. So without uh, any further ado, I'd like us to give a hand over to you um, without wasting any more time. And thank you so much once again for your time. Well, thank you very much, uh, Madam uh, Program Director. And I want to join uh, uh, those of you who have spoken before me to thank the uh, conveners of this event today. I think it is uh, important that 
um, we assess the state of play in the implementation of the AFCFTA. Uh, I had prepared a, um, a, a text speaking notes, but uh, because of constraints of time, I will uh, be very, very brief and the, the speaking notes can be circulated. I want to give also Ambassador an opportunity to speak before, uh, before he has to depart. The, as was said in the introduction, uh, today we have 42 countries that have ratified the agreement establishing the AFCFTA. Uh, this is the first time in the history of the African continent that we have actually progressed uh, uh, so much and made so much progress in economic integration. It is significant because of the challenges that we faced in the past. The biggest challenge we faced in the past is uh, some of the biggest challenges from an economic standpoint, uh, the, the fragmentation of, of markets in Africa, the smallness of national economies, the lack of industrial capacity in many countries across uh, the African continent, and then the over-reliance on the export of primary commodities uh, for, for decades and decades. And all of this resulting in a very low intra-Africa trade a percentage of uh, 18% relative to intra-regional trade of, of other regions of the world, such as uh, North America, uh, Southeast Asia, and of course, uh, the European Union as, as an integration model. Today, the African continent contributes only 2% uh, to global trade and output, 3.1% to global GDP. And when you compare that with uh, Singapore, whose contribution to global trade and output is over 6%, uh, it's clear that the African continent has uh, quite a long way to go in creating a single market that will be globally competitive, that will be regionally competitive, and that will create jobs uh, on the African continent. We contribute only 2% to global trade, and yet uh, we are uh, endowed with natural resources, 60% arable land, raw materials uh, of up 90% reserves of raw materials, where 50% of bauxite reserves, 40% gold reserves, and 33% uh, diamond reserves. This is now uh, uh, globally. Of course, the, the main reason why we remain reliant on the export of these primary commodities is because of lack of industrial uh, productive capacity uh, in many, many countries on the African continent. And so the African uh, continental free trade area, the AFCFTA, is not just about being a trade agreement. It's very, very clear in the um, uh, um, Agenda 2063, the Africa we want, that the AFCFTA is a flagship project for Africa's economic development uh, based on an integrated uh, economic model. And so we have taken a conscious effort to, um, to take concrete steps to make sure that this aspiration of being more than just a trade agreement, that we actually meet this aspiration. And some of the concrete um, pillars that we have introduced are, for example, a program on small medium enterprises development, we're working on uh, establishing a digital marketplace which will connect small medium enterprises across the African continent. This digital marketplace will enable um, the expansion of a, or onto new markets of a small medium enterprise to explore. If you are in SADC, to explore the market in West Africa. If you are in West Africa, to explore the market uh, and expand into, into other regions. And so for the purpose of inclusivity, small medium enterprises uh, are critical uh, to implementation of the AFCFT. The second important pillar, which again, in our view, will contribute uh, to enhancing trade and investment in Africa is the Pan-African Payments and Settlement System. As we speak today, there are 42 currencies in Africa. If you are in, in East Africa and you want to trade with someone in, in West Africa, you have to first convert the Kenyan uh, uh, shilling into the dollar, 
transact uh, uh, with your counterparty in Ghana, they receive uh, the dollar and they convert the dollar into uh, a Ghanaian city. And this cost of currency convertibility, this uh, um, over-reliance on what we call third currencies, we quantify it to be about $5 billion annually. That, that means that $5 billion is forgone from Africa's overall GDP. It also means uh, that in terms of competitiveness, in terms of uh, efficiency of trade and affordability of trade, that there again, uh, Africa is losing out. And so the Pan-African Payments and Settlement System is designed to, to circumvent this challenge of uh, the cost of currency convertibility, the multiplicity of currencies, uh, to ensure that this objective of boosting intra-Africa trade, that it is actually met um, and that we double intra-Africa trade by the year 2035 uh, through using digital tools for uh, enhancing trade on the African continent. The third pillar that I would introduce is uh, the private sector engagement strategy, a, our private sector engagement strategy rather. This agreement, as I've noted in the past, it has not been negotiated for governments. It's not for trade bureaucrats like me. This agreement is for the private sector uh, to be able to trade our corporations on the African continent, as well as small medium enterprises, young entrepreneurs, who want to take advantage of this vast market. And so in our private sector uh, um, and value chain strategy, we have identified agriculture, the automotive sector, pharmaceuticals, as well as transport and logistics as the key priority value chains for mobilizing investment in so that we can create jobs. And we've estimated that where we mobilize the appropriate investment for these value chains, it is possible uh, to contribute to intra-Africa trade uh, up to $11 billion annually, as well as create over 750,000 jobs, um, mainly uh, for, for, for women and young entrepreneurs. Where is the investment going to come from? It has to come from the private sector. Uh, let me give you an example. In the automotive sector, as we speak today, we as a secretariat have mobilized $1 billion for the automotive sector so that countries that want to enter the automotive sector, the value chains, that they have the investment uh, to, uh, to do so, to be in the co components uh, industry of the value chain, to create jobs, to contribute to Africa's industrialization, and to be part of implementation of the AFCFTA. In the pharmaceuticals area, we're also equally working hard to mobilize uh, uh, investment so that countries that want to be part of the pharmaceuticals value chain and to trade um, in the uh, pharmaceutical sector, they have the investment that they require uh, to do so. As you know, in 2019, Africa imported $16 billion worth of pharmaceuticals. This means that th these are jobs that are foregone in Africa. $15 billion worth of pharmaceutical products, which we as Africans and across the African continent, we have the capacity uh, in a few years time uh, to, to, to substitute these imports with production that can happen here uh, on the African continent. But this will require investment. Uh, and so we are working with them, with uh, our partners, to mobilize the investment that, um, that is required. These are some of the initiatives that we have undertaken uh, and that we will continue to, uh, to advance to ensure that indeed um, we do boost intra-Africa trade. Where we boost intra-Africa trade even by 1%, that is an amount of about $75 billion that uh, we uh, contribute overall to Africa's GDP annually. And that's a significant amount because it means that we, we would be creating jobs. I would like to leave you with uh, two success stories and uh, which provide encouragement for me. I was just in Lesotho on Monday uh, this week. Lesotho has become globally competitive 
in the area of textiles, clothing, and garments. Isutu now supplies uh, Gap and uh, uh, Levi's, uh, uh, these uh, uh, leading global brands for, uh, for garments. Second, Isutu is competitive, is becoming competitive, globally competitive in the area of components. I visited a plant called Adient. They've created 750 uh, decent paying jobs, uh, high uh, technology that is being deployed to create uh, seats for vehicles that we suit to, uh, for vehicles that will be exported from the Southern African region into other parts of the world, and more importantly, under the AFCFTA. And so this to me demonstrates that the AFCFTA provides an opportunity for all countries all countries can benefit from this agreement, provided, of course, we work hard to identify the value chains that a country can focus in, and we work together to mobilize the investment to see uh, uh, returns. The last observation I would make, which again is a very positive observation. So the World Bank in 2020 released a study that where we implement the AFCFTA effectively, we have an opportunity to contribute um, a, a significant amount, over $450 billion to Africa's GDP by the year 2035, as well as uh, lifting 100 million Africans out of abject poverty and moderate poverty by the year 2035. And the most immediate beneficiaries of those would be women-led small and medium enterprises when they trade across uh, borders and across regions uh, of the African continent. So for the private sector, certainly there are opportunities uh, for large corporations, for big corporations, for small medium enterprises, the opportunities are there. It is going to be a difficult exercise to implement this agreement. It's not going to be something that happens overnight. We have to expect that there will be challenges. We must look to the model of Europe the, the, the positive experiences of Europe, the, the model of integration of Europe, as well as uh, the lessons that uh, uh, Europe, uh, uh, the mistakes that Europe made on their path over 72 years of uh, market integration. So we should expect that it's not going to happen overnight, that it's going to be difficult. However, if we don't go down this path of economic integration on the African continent, we shall remain in the condition that we have been in as African countries, and that is to say, smallness of national economies, remaining on the periphery of the global economy, remaining at the mercy of global supply chains, uh, remaining with uh, uh, trade patterns that are colonial, and of course, uh, uh, this continued reliance on the export of primary commodities will continue, where we do not um, move ahead with the implementation of the AFCFTA so that in 20 to 30 years time, we fundamentally restructure uh, Africa's economy using this trade instrument, uh, which we have started to implement. So I want to thank you very much the uh, organizers for the opportunity, uh, the text that I, the, st the statement that I had prepared, we shall share it so that for those uh, who are interested, uh, it can be made available. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, um, His Excellency uh, Wamkelene Mene, for that thought-provoking insight, which have certainly given uh, the audience the opportunity to reflect and, and have a, a, a position uh, in terms of how to take the continent forward. I'm aware that we are running behind schedule. Uh, without any waste of time, I'm going to call upon the Ambassador of Morocco to come in quickly, for he has already expressed the need to... Uh, make uh, observation inputs um, based on the uh, remarks by His Excellency Mene. Over to you, uh, Ambassador. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me the floor. I would like first to thank the Grand Hill Africa Institute for this excellent initiative, which allows us to uh, exchange and share ideas uh, on one of the most important topics today facing our continent. I would like also to really thank the uh, Secretary General of the AFCFTA uh, for the, uh, the very clear brief 
uh, 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 expose he just had uh, he just made. And I think I, I could sign uh, right now uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, sign about the achievement uh, he has made. I think it's, the vision is clear and there are now some results. And I would like to, 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 to acknowledge that uh, the Secretariat of AFCFTA has uh, spared no efforts in promoting, advancing, and implementing this uh, integration process to which we look up uh, as Africans. So uh, I think that, that through the examples you have just uh, mentioned, these secretaries has in a very short time, indeed achieved a major and very uh, promising steps. And I would, I would here to reiterate to him, the Morocco's, Morocco's full support and commitment, not, not only in maintaining these dynamics, but also reinforcing it in every way possible through dialogue, mutual understanding, uh, uh, respect and solidarity. And I think what he mentioned about the private sector is very important. I believe that the dimension of the private sector will help us to, uh, to go to move forward. Another idea, uh, as you know, I have, I think, five minutes, right? I would like to be very brief. The Morocco has just deposited its instruments of ratification two weeks ago. Uh, yes, Secretary General, and this, I think, should be considered as a strong mark of its commitment to this project. Indeed, Morocco makes the uh, African integration a priority of its continental policy, and, uh, and will continue to do so. And as a uh, further proof of this uh, uh, solid commitment of, of my country. Uh, uh, today, Africa uh, concentrates two thirds of Morocco's foreign direct investment. We have invested since 2008, more than $3 billion on, on the continent and we be, be, became the largest investor in, uh, uh, in, uh, in West Africa and among competing with South Africa, we are the two largest African uh, investors across the continent alongside with our friends from South Africa. So, so what I want to say at this uh, level of this debate that far from being an end in itself, and this I think is very, and the Secretary General already mentioned that, the creation of the African continental free trade area marks the beginning of a broader collective plan and a new model of supportive, efficient, and inclusive product development in, in the service of the African nations. And uh, he, 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 uh, he, the, the example of Lesotho is a small country is uh, uh, illustrative of this well. So for us, for Morocco, and this is this is uh, this AFC FTA fits perfectly into the vision of His Majesty the King Mohammed VI for an integrated and prosperous Africa. Today, I think that our discussions are particularly relevant and certainly critical. We are, are tackling, and you must be we must be aware of that, the very core ambition of the AFCFTA, namely trade and investment opportunities. The promotion of trade and investment is not, like the SG said, a powerful tool, and you use the word tool, but indeed an essential one to accelerate, accelerate the implementation. And he, he talked about the automotive uh, industry. South Africa and Morocco shared the same vision of an African industrial base and integrated service sector that will need the needs of our continent. So to summarize, the free trade area is a long-term ambition. Somehow I like to call it a moving target. It needs, and we have to be very clear and uh, frank on this issue, it needs it needs 
profound and deep rooted tools to be fully effective. Trade, investment, yes, but we need to build up, and I would like to leave you with this, these ideas, a space of complementarities to the creation of interconnected regional growth poles and a space and a space com conductive to comparative advantages. And I agree with this HG when he said that we should avoid the mistakes of the European Union in this connection. And we should be, because I am going to go as uh, in, in a few months as ambassador of Morocco to the EU. So I know what I mean, what the EG was meaning. We need to avoid some mistakes. And our countries and our policymakers have to, and this is the case of Africa, to endeavor to respond to the multi, uh, multi challenges that we are currently embracing in Africa. It is crucial, I will be brief, to level up our responses to issues such as health management. And the COVID situation was an example. Debt management, social policies, migration, development. Otherwise, Africa takes the risk to move in the wrong way. We, one should not make the mistake to refer to the free trade area as purely economic initiative. Of course, it is important tool, but I think we need to dialogue in order to open our borders for common markets in Africa and open ourselves to common values, common strategies, and common visions. One country alone cannot face these strategies. That's why I think we should work together. We should plan together as Africans in order to uh, realize our ambition. So we need to change our software in order to promote successful policies based on good governance and innovation. We, can, we should not be afraid on tackling these issues. We, and we need to, to tackle, sometimes it, that it is difficult, but we need to tackle these issues of innovation, of dialogue with governance. We need to protect also, we need to show solidarity with, the, with, with other countries, you know, uh, the most vulnerable and to pray, provide our people with trust, security and development because it's, it's good to promote uh, 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 free trade agreements, but we don't, if we don't have stability, we don't have a, 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 a peace in the region, we cannot uh, follow our, our common ambition. So one of the most pressing challenges, and I will leave you with this, uh, uh, with this uh, for discussion, uh, that uh, AFCACA can provide all employment opportunities for the 2 million people who join the labor market each year. With the full-fledged and functional AFC, AFC, AFCFTA, Africa, I think, could meet these challenges. And finally, I would like to conclude, and I will share with you some ideas about this issue. The key question today is how do we transform our shared aspiration into a concrete regional dynamic, leading to economic integration, sustainable stability and security, as well as like uh, uh, Ramaphosa always says, building up an audacious and prosperous Africa. So we need this political dialogue. We need to exchange. And I, 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 th I think that the African Free Trade Agreement is in this regard def definitely a major breakthrough. SG, I would like to once again to support you and to bring our, our modest contribution in building integration schemes in Africa because we cannot avoid regional integration schemes. We need to work together, as I was saying, in order to to, 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 to achieve our goals. And for these reasons, what we need, leadership, vision, and commitment. These are the three elements today that we need to work together. And we, we should not lose this opportunity. And you and the AF, AF, CFTA, it's 
complicated concept, but in our, it, it's a very positive tool to, uh, uh, to, 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 to deal with in order to uh, reach our shared ambition for prosperous Africa. Thank you very much for listening to me. And I'm, I will be here uh, to discuss if, if there is or bring some clarification on this topic. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, for, for that uh, response, which is most welcome. Um, we certainly, you also certainly give us food for thought um, in terms of a number of areas that you have um, outlined. I was quite particularly pleased to hear the last bit around leadership, uh, vision, and commitment, which are the drivers of any sustainable development. Um, on that note, um, we will just request um, uh, a note by a note by Jaro. Um, apparently, she is not. She has been struggling to connect. And you know that we have a series of connectivity issues. She instead of coming, she would rather do an audio. Um, can I just request through you, Prasol, to give us indication whether um, Jaro is ready for the for, for petty rendition? Yes, she's ready. Okay, uh, Jaros, please proceed. Give us that uh, a, a wonderful a, a poem that you have uh, prepared for us as we mull over very serious issues that have been brought forth by, um, you know, uh, His Excellency Yusuf as well as uh, His Excellency Umke. Um, um, Changes the I believe she's still trying to connect. Um, Ms. Jaffa, if you're ready, we are all ears. Hello, uh, there's load shedding. That's why she's struggling to connect. Let's go to the next speaker, Mr. Jose Miranda. Okay, let's let's start do that. Um, um, Mr. Jose Miranda um, is the director at the Rotary. Please give us your sense of how you have observed or your, your views regarding the presentation by His Excellency. Um, the floor is yours, you say. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you also uh, to Brand Deal Africa for really organizing a, a, a very important topic for us to talk about uh, and in our dealings and our trade in Africa. So just a little bit of background, and I'll be speaking a little bit more around the infrastructure, you know, the real needs that we share commonly in the African continent um, about, about infrastructure, because, because that for us is really fundamentally. So I'm with an organization, a company, I'm a director of this company, also an owner um, uh, called Zutari. Zutari is a consulting engineering group and, um, and, 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 and we employ uh, uh, quite a number of engineers right through the continent. Uh, probably today we regard ourselves as the largest African uh, consulting engineering group. And I've been particularly privileged uh, throughout 31 years with this organization in having worked in, um, in a lot of the African countries. Um, last time I counted about 42 countries so far, and we have executed projects, infrastructure projects. Now, fundamentally, uh, you know, it is really great to hear from the speakers and ambassadors uh, around what is really uh, envisaged uh, with with the AFC FTA um, agreement. And I, and I really, uh, I mean, I've been following the developments of this agreement for over a number of years, and really, it's it's an aspiration that 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 we as multinational companies operating in different jurisdictions uh, uh, really feel strongly about 
about getting a commonality. It is very difficult, and it still remains very difficult for us to often implement cross-border projects um, and, 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 and really create the facilitation, both from an uh, investment uh, a point of view, commercial point of view, as well as, uh, as our, our, our legal, legal tools that are available to us. Now, as engineers, we like to do calculations and we like to do plan, plan things, and we are often confronted with these um, additional complications of legal and, 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 and commercial confrontations, which really do, uh, and it's quite evident and, uh, from the number of projects that we have executed in the past, right through the continent, that these complications actually create additional and quite costly uh, effects to uh, uh, infrastructure. Now, today in the African continent, there are a number of themes that are quite, uh, that are quite prominent. And, and, and this trade agreement will also help to fundamentally address these themes. So we are all aware, and it's quite evident, that things like energy Absolutely. deficits, energy deficits are certainly placing um, a lot of pressure on the inability to invest. People, people really want to invest in the continent, and, and we have seen right through there are a number um, uh, there's a great book that was published a couple of years ago that actually highlight that there are more than 100 companies in the African continent, real African companies, that have a turnover of above $1 billion. And that is very encouraging. Although some of the speakers have already spoken about the fact that only 2% of, 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 uh, of, of, of the trade is inter-African is really encouraging to see how much and how big and into what level of sophistication African businesses um, are implemented. Now, from, a point, from, a, from an infrastructure point of view, one of the fundamentals that need to be addressed and are being looked at, and there is a lot of thought going into that, is the energy deficits. And we already see with organizations such as the Southern African Power Pool, the East African Power Pool, the West African Power Pool, the more those organizations get together and facilitate their interactive uh, interests, uh, the more we, can, we are able to share uh, our joint power uh, needs. Um, as some of the countries have enormous capacity to generate yeah. Uh, to others that need for manufacturing and the number of the industries. One of the, one of the current projects and themes that, that we as an organization are doing under the auspices and in a way uh, uh, financed by the United Nations is the whole question of climate change and how that is, is looking at forward in affecting our interactions in the continent. You know, what is it going to mean for us uh, and, and what is going to happen uh, if we do not also preemptively address the climate change effects? So that's, there's, a, there's a, whole, a whole host of issues being tackled there and probably also something that will get prominence in terms of addressing the infrastructure requirements. Food security, and I was very encouraged to hear that one of the speakers did start speaking about the fact that we need the free trade, that we need goods and people to be able to move freely. Uh, too often do we see in, imports coming from other part, parts of the world, other continents, where we ourselves have the full capacity to produce it locally, and, 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 and we're just experiencing infrastructural deficits to be able to transport, to be able to distribute, and to be able to put it in markets. It comes from far, it seems to be cheaper, and, 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 and we actually create uh, our own environment of, 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 of taxation and so forth that, that, that doesn't promote our own internal trade. 
So uh, the, 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 the other two themes, I just want to talk a little bit about two more themes um, that is really getting prominence, one being water and sanitation. So um, besides uh, water being a fundamental human right, we also seeing that uh, that it, it, it is a theme that's getting a lot of prominence, um, and 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 really also a pillar that will facilitate the improvement of of, of intercontinental trade, because um, uh, 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 communities are able to uh, live further apart uh, once they have water and treated sanitation and so forth. Uh, you are able to, 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 to create a much better environment for people to um, uh, respond to manufacturing needs, uh, transport needs, and so on. And lastly, but not the least, and, and we've been very involved in um, quite a number of, of, of transportation studies and, and inter, in, intercontinental transportation studies, what we call the corridors. And they are interlinked with the ports and they are interlinked with some of the rail facilities as well as the road facilities. And that is certainly, once again, the world has started to, 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 to address those issues in a much more uh, focused way in our continent. And I think uh, uh, there are a number of examples in the continent that are, that are working well. Perhaps, perhaps we need to look at what we did right in the past. Uh, 25, 30 years ago, we started looking at... at, at uh, uh, getting uh, corridors and toll roads going through countries uh, and in some ways created and helped to establish some legal environment that that, 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 that gets uh, promoted. And it's really, uh, uh, there are really a number of good examples. In the so and an infrastructure point of view. That, that we have to translate, uh, because it, it came such a long way, this, this agreement. It's, it's been coming for years, and, 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 and we've been part of it in a number of forums. But, but it, uh, very exciting for us that are operating right through the continent and really looking at things from an engineering, a planning, a, a, um, a facilitation of infrastructure point of view, that uh, we are really have to translate the aspiration of the agreement. That's really, and, and I have to agree with uh, the Moroccan ambassador. It really is about the translation of that aspiration uh, into progress, into real action um, and improvement uh, of the conditions of the continent so that they underpin uh, really the, uh, the objectives of, of, of this agreement. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I know we are short of time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miranda, for that insightful um, uh, issues that you have that you have highlighted, which I think have given uh, colleagues who are online an opportunity to reflect. Um, can I just also encourage people just to continue use the chat box? By raising all the questions that uh, are pertinent and uh, direct them to the His Excellency or any of the respondents that have, have come have come through. Um, not in waste of time. Let me call up. Let me try and let's try and, and and call upon um, uh, uh, the next respondent, which is uh, John Karinga, who is the CEO uh, from Invest Africa Conference, uh, based in uh, Netherlands. John, can you please or take the floor? Um, thank you very much, Saul, and uh, the participants. This is a very great initiative from uh, Brand Hill, and uh, we are happy to uh, partner with you. Um, I would briefly uh, tell you about uh, the Invest in Africa conference and um, highly support what uh, Ambassador Wamkil was talking about. Uh, we really need to support uh, the private sector because uh, the private sector is uh, the sector that creates uh, jobs and uh, pays the high needed uh, taxes to run our countries. Um, we planned this conference uh, in 2020, uh, in uh, March 2020, but COVID came and uh, the conference fell like a game of cards, like we all know events that we suspended. 
So we are on again uh, this year on 1st and 2nd of uh, July uh, in Amsterdam, uh, Netherlands. And of course, uh, people will ask uh, why uh, uh, the Netherlands, but uh, being in diaspora, uh, this, is, uh, this is an important uh, opportunity for us to, um, to extend uh, resources uh, to, our, to our mother continent. And uh, of course, um, we are trying to create a one-stop shop where uh, for, for people coming from this part of the world, people do not understand uh, that Africa is uh, a continent uh, uh, with uh, you know, uh, 54 countries. So uh, we'll try to create a one-stop shop where people interested in investing in Africa can uh, come and meet um, uh, you know, partners in Kenya, partners in South Africa, partners in Ghana, as opposed to traveling to Ghana and uh, you think you have a feel of Africa, but you don't have a feel of Africa until you travel to many countries, which again becomes uh, you know, uh, expensive and, and all that. So our theme is um, unlocking um, uh, digital transformation, uh, investment and trade opportunities. There's a lot of interest in uh, the tech sector. In fact, uh, last year alone, um, uh, tech startups closed about uh, $6 billion uh, uh, of investments. And of course, again, um, you're talking about uh, investments. I also run a business in Kenya and know the challenges that uh, African businesses go through trying to access capital from banks uh, and other sources. So any hand that uh, one can get from international investors to put in our businesses in Africa can uh, go a long way. Uh, we're also talking about uh, AFC FTA and trade is very, very important. So we'll be creating a forum for buyers and buyer, buyers and sellers to meet, whether the uh, buyers are from Europe and um, buyers are from uh, Africa uh, for trade, uh, for import and export to meet. So those are the two uh, objectives of the conference, uh, to promote investments and to promote uh, trade uh, between Europe and Africa and Africa and Europe and uh, Africa and uh, Africa in line with the uh, AFC FTA. And what are the sectors that uh, uh, have uh, uh, the themes that we're going to be discussing? Um, the key areas, of course, is agribusiness. We know Africa was feeding uh, the rest of the world uh, during COVID. So agribusiness right now is huge. Uh, you know, um, manufacturing, you're talking about value addition. There's a need to invest in uh, manufacturing and create jobs and create um, uh, trading opportunities uh, for our people. Uh, AFC, FTA cannot exist unless we promote more and more of manufacturing, renewable energy, uh, infrastructure, uh, real estate, uh, especially affordable housing, uh, digital technology, uh, financing of uh, SMEs. You know, SMEs are the drivers of the economy in Africa, so they need a lot of uh, financing uh, to be able to thrive. Uh, we're looking at trade, uh, women in business, um, FinTech is huge, uh, mining, uh, oil and gas, logistics, and uh, healthcare. Healthcare, of course, uh, we've all learned our lessons uh, during uh, COVID. Healthcare, our healthcare is in, a, is in shambles, so we'll be discussing uh, investing more and more in uh, our healthcare. And of course, uh, the, uh, the challenges that have faced uh, tourism, they're going to be discussing that to try to uh, uh, put uh, Africa tourism in the marketplace. So we would like to uh, I take this opportunity to extend an invitation to all of you to attend this important conference. Um, the dates are uh, 1st and 2nd of July at the Royal Tropical Institute in Amsterdam. Uh, there are great benefits for all the participants. Uh, so please uh, join us. And uh, there are more details you can find on uh, investinginafrica.eu. That's a website, investinginafrica.eu. And uh, we hope to see you all in Amsterdam so, so we can do uh, business, meet investors, and uh, just network and be friends. Thank you. Thank you very much, John, for that insightful um, input that you've made, which does clearly point to a greater synergies with the current conference, as it were. And we certainly hope that um, colleagues who attend in this particular conference will have an opportunity to reflect and, and also partner uh, with yourself in, in pushing the uh, 
uh, agenda uh, moving forward. Some, some of the areas that you have highlighted are quite pertinent. Agribusiness, manufacturing, renewable energy, uh, real estate, mining. Uh, these are all sectors which uh, His Excellencies have alluded to, which does point to um, uh, uh, element of, of synergy. It also makes sense in terms of what uh, Jose made reference to, particularly in relation to how Africa um, leadership address issues of energy deficit, how Africa leadership address issues of climate change, how Africa addresses issues of food security, and last but not issues of water and sanitation. So these are which find expression in all the um, issues that you've spoken to up to this point. Without any waste of time, I will call upon um, Saul, could you just let us know if um, uh, uh, Jaff, um, Jaff, Jaffra Royce is, uh, is available? Has she been able to join us to give us a rendition before we proceed? Yes. Yes, yes. I'm, yes. I'm here. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, loud and clear. Please Thank proceed. you very much. Um, Good day, colleagues. Uh, my name is Mpelisa Njaro Jasta, and I hope we can clear the current crisis of load shedding because it will definitely impede also in the current free trade that we are trying to establish. Anyhow, Igari Giawona Moshlang Ho, Moshlamunemi, Nekhabo Yaba Soto Ui Petesite, Tetana, Tekali Duzi Matwele, Figari Tava, Aini Petenini. My shwe shwe ka se shwe shwe ase dinne ne bale ne tle hakalo se ya na mare na yona ko bo ya bo hadi tielo ale thathe mo sene a lohe a re tse ona mo dia nyewe a ima mene ke la ne haladi go ba le sa tsana he a se mo tlhe go go mangwana hai a se le heritse ke yo nkhonwa tsona di tlhogolo le di tlhogwana a bo ka ba pele ba tseng ba tsile le hole bo ha tla ma tsholo mo hlodi wa mahodi mo le mafatsi mo ba le ke tlile ka jeno tsa tsilo mo so tlo e gopolang e bila ga ba ka bigantso ba se o a le ntsona go tlhwana mantso mantso there is a tribe named after the sun with starlight babies shining in trade across borders clothed with the finest of love. Africa brought all her light for this nation to wake up like the sun to itself with all the light powers and beings. The God of the sun ushered rays of blessings to each one to let another soul right where the sun was born. The rays were aligned with the glow of the moon for the soil child to advance. Light up your land of prosperity always. Time for that exchange, so do not share. Besides, you are soft headed to perceive tomorrow, to live, rise, and illuminate. Wow, wow, how fascinating. Um, that wonderful poem that you've just rendered. Um, this is a kind of um, uh, poems that are so refreshing in so many ways. How I wish I would have had more time and see you in real life um, to experience the kind of talent that uh, you have displayed. Thank you very much, uh, Haiti, for that wonderful rendition that you have um, given us, which I sincerely hope um, even uh, colleagues who don't understand is so true. Um, but how you've actually put it across, um, the, your voice was quite melodious enough for them to comprehend what you were saying. Thank you very much for that. Um, a rendition that you've given us a uh, match after rose. Uh, thank you very much. Well, one of the things that perhaps maybe we just might have to do, uh, Brasol, with your permission, um, we uh, I'm just looking at the, the, the chat box here in terms of the questions and issues that have been raised um, by colleagues. Um, and I just want to check if there's any other pertinent questions which they want to direct to His Excellencies. Um, or uh, because well, most of the questions or statement I'm seeing on the on the chat box are more complimentary, which does really affirm uh, where we are sitting, and it's quite noble to see that. Um, can I just encourage everyone to raise 
any questions uh, or issues to which they, they feel pertinent to. And, and as we gravitate towards the end of our very interesting conversation, which I think has been completely mind blowing in terms of giving us insight on how far the, the Africa trade um, um, is going. I'm just going through the chat box just to check if I'm not missing out anything uh, from you, uh, the, the participant. Uh, for we've asked you to uh, make your notes. I'm just steadily going through just to check if there's any questions which I need to uh, forward or raise it towards specific speakers. Um, well, I don't seem to see any direct question. These are more statements that are quite straightforward and, and uh, colleagues obviously understanding the importance of the networks um, as it were. Um, yeah, so I don't see any major questions that I would want to uh, direct to these excellencies, which does say the question, the issues that have been addressed by all the speakers have been quite pertinent. Uh, Prasol, with your permission, we now are nearing an end. We've got the, uh, the last item on the agenda, which is the vote of thanks by Masingita Masunga and a brand ambassador uh, above, above normal sports and fitness gear. Uh, if, Masingita, if Masingita is readily available um, to give us a word of thanks, um, she's uh, uh, welcome to do so. Is Masingita ready? Uh, program director, we have Mr. Ben Laker, who still has to speak. Okay, okay. My, my apologies. Uh, for some reason, I don't have you on my, on my notes here. Please, please, apologies for that. Uh, Mr. Ben Laker, please uh, take, the, take the podium um, to yeah. give us your, your views. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Thank you, Brassel and uh, the Brand Hill uh, and Brand Hill for organizing this uh, very informative session. And uh, I'd like to just take this opportunity to thank the uh, two excellencies who have spoken and uh, brilliantly presented uh, the work that uh, the African free trade uh, agreement is wants to achieve and uh, not just from a from an objective perspective but also from a an operational perspective and understanding everything that needs to be invested uh, to see that uh, that achievement come to uh, come to life on the African continent. Uh, my name is Ben Leika. I represent two institutions, the African Agri uh, Council, which is a pan-African entity that promotes the development of uh, African agriculture, and uh, DRC Invest, which is an entity dedicated to promoting private sector investment into agriculture and infrastructure development in the DRC. I will not uh, take too much time as I'm uh, cognizant of the time. I uh, just would like to uh, firstly acknowledge the work, the, the input that trade and economic development agencies can play in advancing the uh, yeah, the the African uh, the African uh, continental free trade agreement across the continent, as uh, self serving as we might be in terms of promoting trade and investment in specific countries, there's a key role that we can play in advancing this uh, very very important agenda, and uh, a number of factors come to mind because. Uh, for Brussels, who I've worked with in the past, and uh, for those who are familiar with the African Agri Council or the RC Invest, you will know that we put a lot of emphasis on the private sector and the role that the private sector can play in the development of uh, Africa, uh, irrespective of where they are in terms of the growth and uh, the traction, whether it's an entrepreneur, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an SME, it's a startup, it's an established business, it's a multinational, uh, these entities representing the private sector have to be involved in, um, in the development of, uh, of the continent. And when we start looking at the involvement of the private sector, the first thing that comes to mind is a new narrative of doing business in Africa. Uh, for an entity that constantly promotes business and investments 
opportunities on the African continent, it is extremely important to put a lot of emphasis on the narrative of what it means to do business in Africa. Uh, whether we're looking at intra-Africa trade and investments or global uh, capital that should be directed to the African continent or opportunities on the African continent, it's important to understand the narrative, understand the risks that comes with uh, investing on the African continent, understand the perceived risk uh, that are that are um, that are presented constantly across different channels about investing in Africa. Uh, I love the book that um, uh, Deloitte, uh, one of the directors uh, for Deloitte in Africa actually wrote where uh, he actually referenced uh, something very important that when we look at the narrative of doing business in Africa, most, most of the time when you're speaking to people living outside of the continent, all we see is war, all we see is diseases, we see Ebola, we see conflict. Uh, uh, some, pe some people went as far as picturing goats and donkeys on the street so it really is a negative picture and a negative image that uh, that is presented the, uh, out there uh, in terms of the african continent while the businesses currently operating on the continent some of them are actually happy to keep that narrative because they're making millions they're making billions on the african continent and they're happy for everyone else who might be interested in uh, jumping on the wagon to know what kind of money what kind of investment returns can be made when you invest in Africa. And uh, we joined the African Development Bank, we joined the, the, the uh, Excellency Mene and his secretariat in terms of changing that narrative. It's important that we present Africa as a key business and investment destination, not just from a grant perspective, not just from a donor community perspective, but from an investment perspective. There is opportunity to, um, to see great returns on the African continent. And when you start looking at the narrative and when you start looking at presenting Africa as a business and, and investment destination as the Secretariat is doing, it's important to put to look at the competitiveness of the different markets. And uh, when you start looking at what the EU has done over the past 70, 60 years in terms of becoming uh, what it is today, they had to take that into consideration and Africa needs to take that uh, into consideration and our competitiveness should lie beyond our natural resources potential. Um, as uh, Excellency Mene uh, mentioned, there's this over-reliance on exports of natural resources without really looking at the transformation of it without looking at value addition and these are discussions that have taken uh, place for decades and uh, it's, it's it's important for us as we're seeing now this agreement coming into shape where we're seeing a lot of africans as uh his excellency mentioned about 42 countries now have trained have, have rectified the agreement it's important again to put a lot of emphasis and urgency on the competitiveness of our African markets. How do we promote uh, opportunities on the continent? How do we promote trading opportunities on the continent? The third point that I'd like to highlight is the skill and human capital capacity. Uh, the previous speakers have mentioned the, the work and the role that they play in terms of training uh, engineers across the continent in order to develop the infrastructure uh, sector on the continent. And rightly so, we need to bring in that infrastructure element. And that's why DRC Invest tend to focus on that when we're looking at uh, the DRC uh, and how we need to bring in infrastructure and link that into uh, the agricultural development when we link that into the energy sector to the ict sector everything comes together but we cannot achieve economic development and industrialization or even reach a competitiveness uh, the the level of competitiveness without investing in human capital development. That is an absolutely no. So from a policy perspective, from the private sector perspective, that is a key element that has to be taken into consideration. Even when we're looking at the single market um, initiative, what is the level of, of, of skills? on the continent, how we how we developing our skills, what the skill transfer, how's that going to be part of this massive uh, initiative as uh, as we're putting it um, 
together. And uh, the fourth point that I will bring up is government governance and policy frame, uh, framework. We, from a council perspective, from an African Agri Council perspective, we've been promoting the African Agri Council, uh, the, the African Agri, uh, the African continent, as an agricultural heaven for the past seven, eight years. And one of the key elements that always come up is governance and policy. Now that we are focusing around investment opportunities in the DRC, again, you hear that a lot more. What is the governance? What is the policy framework? Uh, it's We are happy and pleased to see that there's been progress and improved governance across the African continent. And we looking forward again to seeing a lot more work and a lot more emphasis on creating these conducive environments for the private sector, on bringing in institutions that could support the governance uh, structures, bringing in inf institutions that will support, uh, if again, going back from an agricultural perspective, what are the chambers of commerce doing in terms of supporting these, uh, these, um, uh, these, these agricultural agendas? across the continent, ag agriculture is at the top of the agenda. However, do we have the institutions to support that? Do we have the policy? Do we have the governance structures in place to support that? And these are all, all, uh, all factors that have to be taken into consideration as we're looking uh, into the implementation and the rollout of uh, the continent's uh, ambitious integration initiative. So those are those were some of the the uh, our thoughts that we wanted to bring uh, to the discussion to both uh, excellencies uh, to all the excellencies who have attended to all the private sector and government representatives who are uh, on uh, who have attended who are attending this webinar just to raise a bit more awareness on uh, some of these elements. And we're happy to see that this is strong emphasis on investment. The investment that uh, this Excellency many has, has referred to will not come from the public sector. It will come from the private sector. It will come from uh, entities who will need to see the return on investment. And that's why we're asking the investment that will come in, how is its structure? What are the, uh, the, 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 the payment terms? Everything comes from a private sector angle. And uh, even when we're looking at value chain uh, support for entrepreneurship, what is the role of the private sector is going to play and how are we managing and how are we creating this environment that will enable the private sector to come in confidently and invest in the different value chains, whether it's in automation, in agriculture, in pharmaceutical, we need to have all these in place. And uh, it's, uh, as uh, the Excellency said, it's not going to be an overnight uh, achievement. There is going to be a lot of work. However, in closing, I would like to put a lot more emphasis on urgency because a lot of the discussions that are, that are taking place now, even in the wake of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, all the solutions that are presented, whether it's from an agricultural perspective or from a trading perspective, from a commodity, from a fuel perspective, most of the discussions and solutions that have been presented were presented a decade ago, were presented five years ago, were presented uh, two years ago, when we look at the CADAP initiative, where each country has to dedicate at least 10% uh, of its GDP to agriculture, all these discussions discussions took place, but the implementation and urgency lacked. So we need to put a lot more urgency in rolling out the agreement, in rolling out this uh, continental integration uh, plan and initiative to make sure that we can start moving forward. Uh, in And uh, in closing, I'd like again to, uh, to thank the organizers of, uh, of uh, this webinar, and uh, we are extremely honored to take part into the discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Ben, for that insightful um, position that you've shared with us. I um, just quickly wanna uh, firstly, you know, give uh, Ben a bit of um, uh, recognition in terms of who he is and where he comes from. Um, ben Nitian is the Chief Executive Officer at African Agri Council. Uh, the, Afri um, the, the African Agri Council is a pan-African organization that promotes the development of African, Af of African agriculture by facilitating investment into bankable projects across the value chain. 
Uh, over the years, Ben has worked with global stakeholders within the public and private sector organization across different uh, industries, uh, working with Pan-African in Parliament, uh, African Leadership Academy, and, and now up, uh, African, uh, African Agricultural Council, uh, combined his uh, number of, combined with his uh, extensive experience in the private and uh, private sector organization, it certainly makes him one uh, critical individual that has certainly had value in the kind of conversation. And based on what he has actually put across, it does come across that there are a lot of synergies um, in terms of um, his excellencies, a uh, pronouncement or position in terms of in reflecting on those critical issues, um, areas. I was quite you know, um, fascinated to hear him talk about the, the need to change the narrative of the African continent. Um, um, for, for, for those that are perpetuating this dark, um, horrible continent uh, have got vested interests, which, which is not necessarily in the best interests of, of the, 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 the continent as well. A number of issues that he has pointed out, which were quite critical, issues around skills, uh, competitive skills and human resource capital, uh, governance and policy framework, all these issues um, find expression in the earlier uh, position held by um, um, His Excellency Mane um, in terms of how the, the continent is performing. We all acknowledge that this is a process, not an event. However, uh, they, 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 we have got to a point where there's a bit of traction in terms of taking the continent forward through the trade agreement. <coughs> Without any waste of time, unless there are any other burning questions or issues, I'm looking at the the, the chat the chat group here. I haven't picked up anything, um, you know, that that is of a question or or, or a commentary that um, uh, a participant wants to. Um, as we are about to wrap up, perhaps maybe what I could say pro, uh, through you, Prasol, is to give any audience or uh, any participant an opportunity. Uh, to express them, their views based on the presentation by His Excellencies and the respondents. Is there anyone uh, who want to, you know, seize the, seize the moment and um, share their views? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Ms. Joaquin Bata, please state your, your name and your background, please, Mbata. Uh, um, thank you, Chair. My name is Mzwake Mbata. I'm from the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition. I'm responsible for the, the automotive policy making and the overall support regime of the industry. Um, across the panel, uh, I just want to also check with the Commissioner that um, how far um, are the negotiations to fast track the automotive support across the continent within the context of the Africa continental trade um, uh, uh, agreement? And, and, and what are the <clears throat> processes insofar as finalizing the rules of origins for, for, this, for this particular sector? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mbata, for your question. Um, yeah. um, is there any other question from the floor uh, directed to any of our, our, um, our esteemed delegates? Um, we don't seem to have any, we don't, have, we don't seem to have brave hearts like uh, Mr. Mbata here. Um, let's just see if we can um, have that question um, responded by any of the panelists. The question is, how far is the negotiation in the automotive um, sector? Um, Hi, Chief. Yes, um, yes. Yes, thank you. Um, Mzwake, uh, for your participation. Uh, the Secretary General has just stepped out now because he had given us from 11 to one o'clock, he has just dashed to Pretoria for a two, two, two o'clock meeting. But he has indicated that um, 
we should send him all the comments in the chat boxes and he's going to respond to, to them. Perhaps, um, even though I don't represent the, the secretariat, um, let me just say that um, from what I've heard, uh, perhaps also for the benefit of everyone, the, the negotiations on the operationalization of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement uh, was divided into two phases. The first phase looked at uh, service, uh, trading in services and goods and the feedback from the February AU um, heads of, of state and government assembly um, indicated that um, uh, whilst our target was removing tariffs on up to 90% of the products. Um, already, uh, pro progress indicated that we're sitting on 87.7%, which means we are doing very well because it means we are now left with the 2.3% the for us to be able to, to reach our target. And I'm saying this is reassuring because remember, the, the process of, of operationalization of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement started with the Abuja Treaty of 1980, which means we are doing very well as a, as a, a continent because remember the European Union or Europe took about 72 years to, 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 to operationalize the European Union Treaty. So as a continent, you are doing well. Then the second one, which speaks to your question, Mzake, is that the second phase involves negotiations on, on standardizing the, 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 the investment uh, treaties that Africa and African countries should be signing with all other continents and foreign countries. And the, the second item for discussion now is on, on intellectual property, agreement on intellectual property across the continent. And the third one is on, on digital trade. As we know, uh, COVID-19 has, has catapulted us into adopting digital platforms uh, and there's a need to standardize this because, uh, because whilst we, we will be advancing as part of the fourth industrial revolution, considering that Africa was left out of the th first three industrial revolutions, uh, we have to, to, to do it in such a way that we also protect our consumers. And I'm glad to say that um, Zutari, um, it's part of this conversation because to a large extent, they are the ones who are contributing towards Africa's um, uh, uh, involvement and participation in, in shaping uh, and, and determining the content of our participation in the fourth industrial revolution. Yes, there were, back to your question, uh, there were still hiccups on, on the automotive industry. Uh, for, as an outsider, the question is, if I give an example with South Africa, if we are assembling BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and all these other uh, uh, vehicle brands in the country, do they, they qualify as made in Africa uh, products, because we, we are only uh, 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 assembling them. And this also goes back to the latest discussions on country of origin, where you have a brand like Levi, which is um, an American brand in terms of country of origin, but country of origin because of globalization um, is not the same as country of production. 
because Levi is then produced or any of the uh, Apple products are now produced in, in China. So the same thing applies to us. Is BMW qualifying to benefit from, from um, Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement in terms of rules of origin or, or not, even though assembly is taking place on the continent. So I know this, these are still contentious issues, particularly between South Africa, Rwanda, Kenya, and even Nigeria, who are, who are, who are competing in the automotive sector. Uh, but official response will come from the, from the secretariat and we are going to, to forward to all the participants in this forum, uh, the official responses from the secretariat. Thank you very much uh, uh, for the response. And, uh, and, uh, Thank you very much indeed, uh, Prasol, for that yes. insightful commentary, which I think has benefited not only uh, the colleague who raised it, but uh, not only Mzwake, but pretty much everyone who uh, might have had a similar question or issue of concern. Um, Prasol, I think, you know, my time is up. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to thank, um, uh, you know, uh, Brian Hill, as well as um, Ubabusiza Njigalana, His, His Excellency uh, Ubabusiza Njigalana, for uh, allowing us to be part of this um, conversation, um, as it were. Um, and uh, beyond that, I certainly hope and think that we have done a bit of digging in terms of what the role of trade and investment in promoting or uh, advancing uh, uh, investment in the, in the African setup. Um, there are a lot of initiatives based on um, insights that we've got, that we've received from His Excellency um, and the respondents, which, which does point to some level of convergence and, and also suggest the need for us to, to proceed uh, in promoting these kinds of dialogues across the board. Um, my colleague uh, Tabiso had to leave. I had to sort of steer the ship alone. And, uh, and I just also want to pass um, a, a, a remark and, and thank everyone for the participation on her behalf. And as we conclude from program directing point of view, on that note, I will call upon um, the Miss Masingata Masunga, uh, the brand ambassador of Above Normal Sports and Fitness to give us a vote of thanks. Um, that's all. I uh, hope um, that uh, yeah. marks the... Okay. Yeah, cool. you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, fortunately, I'm with class one. And let me first um, say we want to apologize on behalf of Tabiso, the co-program director, who had to leave early because she had an emergency in the family. There is an African proverb that says, if you treat your calabash like a trash bin, Others will join you to put rubbish in it, which basically means people treat you the way you present yourself. So as we speak of African trade and investment, we need to look at who makes the, the value of brand Africa to appreciate and who makes the value of brand Africa to depreciate. It can only be Africans. It will take us to believe in brand Africa for brand Africa to go. 
It is said that Africa, it is the richest continent in the world, but Africans are the poorest people in the world. It will take Africa to invest in Africa for that to change. Nobody else can do it for us but ourselves. On that note, I was asked to first introduce Above Normal. Above Normal is a sports and fitness brand. We call ourselves the leading sports and fitness gear in Africa because we are Africans. The other top sports and fitness gear companies are not African. We are African and we are leading as much as we are small because we believe in our brand. So for your warm winter sports gear, you can contact us because I believe that in this Africa month, we really need to start a campaign where we buy African product and services because Africa month is about that, believing in Africa and what Africa can offer. Let me finalize that on this note. We are above normal and we are partners of Brand Hill. So the only way your brand can be on top is if you go above normal to the hill so that your brand can be seen and it can be above average. Because that's what above normal is about. The performance that is above average. And between us and brand hill, we are saying, don't go, don't go under. Don't get under because you will underperform. And don't just do it because just doing it is mediocrity. And as Africans, we were possible a long time ago. That's why we pioneered so many things. The only way to perform in an outstanding way is to climb upon the hill and be above normal. Let me thank everyone who participated on the program, including Secretary General Mene. And let me thank everybody who attended and who we've got this the CEO of Grand Hill Africa Institute of Economic Diplomacy, Mr. Stephen Mohalapa. And we've got Leslie Timon, the creative director behind all the creative material prom that promoted the event. And we thank all the media people who attended who supported the event. But above all, we do thank Zatari, our sponsor, because without you, the, in this event wouldn't have that quality that it has had. It was a well-attended event, well-organized, and it's all because of your master that you have flexed towards us. And we say, thank you very much for believing in this African continent. And we say, even tomorrow, because as Africans, we believe that there is to a better tomorrow for us as Africans. 
and plus all would like to conclude the, 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 the event um, for everybody to cover some issues that are outstanding. And I'm saying, when you live here, you can contact Brent Hill and buy your winter gear and sports gear from us because we are the greatest. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, uh, the program directors, um, everyone who was on the program. Uh, you all have the contact details of Brand Hill Africa, uh, which we communicated them through the invite that you all received. I just want to give you the contact details of my partner, Ubutsisa uh, Njigelani. Um, his ad email address is sisa, S-I-S-A uh, dot Njigelani, N-J-I-K-E-L-A-N-A at Sinakoyoli, S-I-N-A-K-O Y-O-L-I dot com. And his mobile number, try first with WhatsApp before cold calling, is 082-455-1816. Thank you very much to everyone. And as my Sengita has already said, thank you to Zutari for having made this event uh, possible. Thank you. See you in the next quarter, colleagues, as we have quarterly webinars, which build up towards our annual uh, conference, which is usually held during the first week of, of December. It will be around the, 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 the 10th of December this year, like the first Wednesday of, of December. Thank you very much. See you in three months. But as you know, uh, we have the Jumbo Africa online WhatsApp groups. Uh, right now we have three already. Those who are interested, do send us your mobile number so that we include you in the, in the WhatsApp group. The conversation continues every minute between entrepreneurs from all over the continent and also entrepreneurs from other continents who have interest in Africa. The last one is that from the 27th to the 29th, DRC Invest will be hosting a DRC Investment Summit in Kinshasa. Uh, just Google DRC Investment Summit or DRC Invest uh, you will be able to get all the details or do visit Jumbo Africa online. Then you will be able to, to see the registration link and we hope to see you in the DRC. Another one is uh, Invest in Africa conference, which will be taking place on the 1st and the 2nd of July uh, in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, you have listened to the CEO of this conference, Mr. John Karegua. Please also go on to Jumbo Africa Online or on, on social media platforms, just Google Invest in Africa. Then you will also get details on how to register. We are looking forward to meeting you in the DRC. From the DRC, we'll all go to the Netherlands. Um, to discuss ways and means of advancing our economies. Thank you and bye bye. Thank you, sir. Bye, Nasson. Cheers. Bye. Thank you and bye. Have a great weekend, everyone, and see you in Amsterdam in July. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Jose. Well done. Thank you, Saul. That was great. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much. Eh? See you guys. Lovely. And uh, always welcome to uh, pull us in.
these are very important topics. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Are you gonna Are you gonna post the recording? Uh, just uh, yes, that's for, uh, that, yeah, definitely. You will find the recording. Okay, on the um, the, the recording will be posted this evening on the Brain Hill Africa YouTube, but we will also share it with everybody who connected today. And we will also publish it later this evening. Uh, there'll be a special yeah. report on this conference. But also those who are in Francophone Africa, uh, Africa 24, News Channel has just confirmed that there will be, that there will be including uh, the proceedings from this conference in their news coverage. Africa 24 is the sixth biggest uh, television uh, channel in Africa after CNN, BBC, uh, Well Service, um, CNBC Africa, uh, Al Jazeera, and, and French uh, 24. So it is the biggest homegrown uh, television channel in Africa. They've just committed that uh, they will be giving coverage to, to this event. Well, thank well you. done, well done, that's beautiful. Well done, thank you. All right, guys, goodbye. And also thanks to High FM and SAFM and, and uh, Kaya FM, which has also given us coverage in the past few days. Thank you. Thank you, sir.